Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to add wireless charging to my mouse and keyboard. This is going to be a quick project that you can do with off-the-shelf components. Inductive charging, or its more popular name, wireless charging is an awesome technology that you have probably heard of by now. It is relatively simple and at the same time a very complex technology, depending how deep you are willing to dig into it. For this video, we are going to stay at a very high level and explain this in very simple terms so we can get our hands dirty sooner. Okay, you don't need to know how wireless charging works in order to build this project, but it's always more fun if you at least have a basic idea of how does wireless charging work. Imagine that you have a long length of wire that you wound into a coil or a donut shape if you like. When alternating current is run through this coil, it sets up a changing magnetic field around it. Then, if you bring another similar coil of wire close to it, the magnetic field from the first or the transmitter coil induces an electrical current in the second or the receiver coil. This current can then be rectified and regulated and finally passed onto a device that needs to be powered. Please keep in mind that for the purposes of this video, this is a very simplified version of how wireless charging works, but hopefully you get the idea. Now back to our problem. First, let's start with the keyboard. Adding wireless charging to my ThinkPad keyboard is going to be very easy, mainly because of its size and the fact that it doesn't move around while I'm using it. This means that we have a lot of flexibility on how to mount the receiver coil without affecting the usability of the keyboard. My approach is to use one of these receiver coils and solder positive and negative output directly to the USB Type-C connector. Then, connect that cable to my keyboard and hide the receiver coil underneath. Since I have a 3D printer, I also printed a small plastic enclosure to hold the coil, but some tape would work just as well. Ok, that was too easy and it shouldn't even void the warranty. Awesome, right? Now let's do something more challenging. The mouse that I have is Logitech MX Master 2S and this one is going to be a little bit more challenging but nothing we can't handle. I had to remove these plastic skis in order to reach the screws that I need to open the mouse. I did order replacement ones from eBay but they haven't arrived yet. So I removed a couple of screws and we are in. Let's take a look at what's inside. One way to connect our receiver coil is to solder positive and negative leads directly to the USB connector which is this little guy right here. In order to do that, we need to take out this board and take a closer look at it. So, we are going to remove everything in our way until we have access to this micro USB connector. Let's take out this board and see where we can solder positive and negative terminal, and also where can we place our receiver coil. Ideally, we would want to place it in this area, but the coil is too large and won't fit without modification. So what I need to do is modify the coil to be a slightly different shape. I'm going to use my soldering iron to remove the coil. And before we start modifying anything, let's take a look if this will even work through the enclosure of the mouse. Here you can see the transmitter coil underneath the mouse and I'm placing the receiver coil on top to see if it works. And it does, we are still in business. Great. I also did some testing and figured out where I want my coil to live, and it's this area right here. Now that I know where I want my coil to live, it's obvious that it's too big and I need to modify it to a slightly smaller diameter. You can do this by hand like I did here to give it a quick sanity check, but what I ended up doing is 3D printing a tiny jig to help with that. This allowed me to take this very long piece of wire, which is basically the receiver coil, just unspooled and wrap it in a bit more consistent way compared to the previous attempt. Ok, now that we have modified our coil, it's time to test if it will still work through the mouse enclosure. Doing a quick sanity check, and yes, it still works. That's awesome. Now, to make sure the coil doesn't move around or change shape too much, I'm going to add a tiny bit of hot glue to it. Ok, we need to solder our positive and negative leads to the USB connector. Instead of soldering to the connector directly, we can see that this USB decoupling capacitor C97 is not populated, which gives us a perfect place to solder to. Now, let's put the mainboard back, 
add the board that has charging LEDs and also we are going to put back the battery pack and see if everything still works. Connect the transmitter coil, green LED means it's ready, replace the mouse on the charger and it's charging. Awesome! Now we need to reassemble everything and make sure we don't break anything in the process. Okay, now that we have assembled everything back together, first step, let's power up the mouse and confirm it still works. Next step, let's check our wireless charging. It still works! Awesome! And that's it! Now we have a keyboard and mouse that support wireless charging. Awesome! If you already have a wireless charger, you could use it to charge your mouse and keyboard, or you could use one of these DIY ones and embed it in your desk or hide it under your mouse pad. There you have it, wireless charging for a keyboard and mouse. Thank you all for watching. If you reached this part of the video, thank you so much. And if you would like to support my channel, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really means a lot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.